Hello, I'm Bettina Cornwell, and this is Sponsorship and Marketing, and we'll be talking about public policy and corporate social responsibility. So let's start with the idea of corporate social responsibility in sponsorship. So sponsorship is a brand um, uh, going into a contract with a sport, art, entertainment charity uh, in order to um, communicate about themselves, typically uh, in a, a marketing sense, but also in this instance uh, in a corporate social, uh, social responsibility sense. So we turn to Elkington and the original idea about um, uh, triple bottle nine being about people, profit, planet. So if we're using uh, corporate uh, sponsorship to achieve CSR kinds of objectives, then what is it that's happening? And we'd have to say that we need something um, about goodwill here. So, and this relies on something called correspondence bias. So perceptions of goodwill in all kinds, or um, perceptions generally, rely on this idea of correspondence bias. So if you behave um, in a charitable way as a company, you must be charitable. If you behave in um, a sense of being health-oriented, you must be a healthy brand. And we have a, a good amount of research that says if we communicate in those terms, that people start to think of us in those terms. Now that said, we can push it so far that it seems unbelievable. We'll talk about that. So in uh, public policy, um, we have a couple of areas that are um, regulated. Tobacco. Alcohol. And gaming. And these regulated areas are sometimes of concern when they are sponsors um, because, in particular, they might reach uh, youth audiences, which they were not intended to reach. And tobacco has come some distance in being outlawed or, um, uh, in a sense, banned from sponsorship in many, many countries. However, there are still instances where uh, enforcement is lax and you still see um, tobacco sponsorship of things that reach children. Um, alcohol and gaming, um, a little bit different. Still the concern is for reaching children and that's why it falls under this public policy discussion. We have something else that's happening these days though and that is in addition to these topics we can also say that we have healthy or unhealthy food and drink that are being um, criticized when they're in a sponsorship relationship with something that is healthy. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. We also have a particular concern in, a, uh, in terms of uh, CSR and policy when we're sponsoring environment health uh, and um, for example social issues so the sorts of things that relate to the people and planet part but if they're taken too far there's the question of if they're really only oriented to the profit part. And that is where we've done some research to talk about um, the sponsorship of those kinds of things by brands that may not perceive, be perceived as in keeping with those uh, activities. And then we get those terms like greenwashing, pinkwashing, redwashing, wokewashing, um, where um, the authenticity is questioned. So let's take a look at that for a moment. How does that work? So. Let's consider uh, a continuum going from unhealthy to healthy. I'm 
Right, so along this continuum, if I have my sponsor perhaps with the unhealthy end with foods that are perceived to cause obesity, be uh, low in nutrition, high in sugar, salt, fat, so my food sponsor for the moment, let's say, And at this other end, I have some healthy activity, perhaps in sport. And this correspondence bias that naturally happens and works quite well gets disrupted. And that is usually with skepticism. So I don't believe that they really care about this activity. I think they are borrowing this activity um, to look better themselves. So skepticism disrupts this, um, especially when you have what we will call um, an aligned difference. So along a continuum, they're about health, but they're at the opposite ends. So when this happens, um, we originally researched this with regard to uh, the Red Cross and um, uh, the sponsorship by uh, fast food brands. And when that happens, it's interesting that it is the brand meaning clarity the brand meaning clarity of the healthy activity that is destroyed. Now, the brand is what the brand is. They continue to be who they are. It is the decision of the charity or uh, sport nonprofit in accepting this money that draws them into question and their brand meaning clarity is then uh, damaged. So, uh, an example would be all of the backlash that McDonald's received for sponsoring the Olympics. They uh, eventually left that relationship probably because the negative press outweighed the positive. Um, the question is how skeptical are people and how disruptive is that? And then um, are we indeed destroying the brand meaning clarity of that sponsored entity? This has been Public Policy and CSR in Sponsorship and Marketing. Thank you.